present of, on behalf of the cloud team where I work, uh, the work we've been doing in the past uh, six, seven years, starting in 2012. So I just arrived two years ago, so I know mostly all of the story, but uh, I was not there in the early days, so, but I'm happy to answer any questions. If not, I see some faces that might have been longer than I did, so they might be helpful. Uh, this is what we'll cover basically, uh, a bit of the, what we were trying before 2011, uh, why we decided that the going virtually school, how it uh, took us some time to convince the whole uh, user uh, community at CERN, uh, how did we do some uh, uh, research to come up with the actual solution that we picked, which was OpenStack, the open source uh, uh, de facto standard and then some of our highlights, uh, and then what are we planning to do in the next couple of years. So, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, back in, 20, in 2009, it was very, uh, every, almost every user was used to have uh, physical servers for their own, so that was comfortable, right? I have my own physical server, I run whatever I, I want, and nobody else messes with me. What are the main drawbacks? It was very expensive, and because we are a public organization, it took us, or it took users to have uh, physical machines almost up to six months because as you see the, uh, the, main, the main chart here, it's the amount of days that pass since one user wants a physical machine or some hardware until the actual hardware comes, which is uh, something like 300 days. That's even more than, way, way beyond six months, so it's almost a year. So that's definitely not very agile as per 2019 standards, but back then was the, the case. Uh, even before that, we were already running some uh, uh, virtualization for mainly batch jobs. So the jobs that our physicists run, they were already running in this LX Cloud uh, and the LSF. And then uh, uh, we started an early implementation of, um, of a cloud which was based on Microsoft CVI. Uh, and it already got uh, quite some usage. So, but that, by that time, it, it was already clear that we would. Um, need to be running the cloud or virtualized solution for our users. So I think that's when uh, it was agreed to, to go forward with a cloud uh, solution for the whole CERN user uh, community. So in 2018, I think, or 2012, it was, the, it was like a commitment. Okay, we are gonna go now virtual. So this is the, more or less the, the schedule of the actual project where people sat down, started defining requirements, and uh, started testing different solutions, prototyping, showing it to the users, asking early adopters for feedback. Uh, and then stage by stage, uh, as you can see, migrating all of the old jobs to the new infrastructure. And then in parallel to the CERN, to the, to the cloud, we were also, this was part of a bigger project, the Agile Infrastructure Project, where we also started uh, evolving from our homegrown uh, config management tools to, most, to more open source solutions like Puppet. Also in the monitoring side, we also started uh, uh, adopting open source solutions, which has proven now over the years a, a great decision back then. Uh, now we picked OpenStack, uh, it already started in, 20, in 2009, I think the first official release which was October 2010. It was a joint initiative by NASA and Rackspace, and it started growing in popularity. So back in the days, it, was a, it got a lot of hype, and uh, anyway, it fit our needs, so we just decided to adopt it. Uh, we started then, I think, 2012, 2013 with OpenStack. This is a snapshot of the first uh, Horizon dashboard. So I must say, uh, I'm reusing the slides of Belmiro for this, uh, for this presentation, and as you can see, he was one of the early uh, uh, pe person, people in the, in the project, and this is a simple snapshot of one of the first prototypes. Uh, then, uh, one of the cool things about OpenStack is it, that it, it allowed us to iterate fast because the OpenStack release cycle is pretty fast, it's a si six months, so every six months there is a new release that we then backport here with our changes, and then we have it. So these were early uh, versions of our logo that we had to drop because we were infringing several laws. The first of them is that we, you cannot reuse the CERN logo at your will, and then I think it was the hamster, it was registered with some trademark like copyright, so we needed to, to, to drop it, so now we just use the, the OpenStack standard one. So that was 2013, we started with uh, some hundred hypervisors, 
so compute nodes. But then we had like uh, we have grown to an infrastructure to uh, 10,000 nodes. So now we are running all of them under OpenStack. So that's the way we offer the CERN community infrastructure as a service. Uh, and so the last six years have been the story of how we have evolved. So we started with early releases. I won't go into detail here. Uh, back in 2013, we already got a second data center in Hungary. So we've been running ever since two data centers, both uh, abstracted through OpenStack, uh, mainly running batch jobs, but uh, other services at CERN also run their services within uh, our infrastructure. There's lots of technical details. That was the first uh, architecture that we had there. Uh, there is the concept in OpenStack of cells, which is something like regions in AWS. And then we had two at the very beginning. So one region was uh, Hungary and the other one was the data center here in Geneva, mainly physical separation. These are some graphs of the early adopters. Uh, as you can see now, the dotted lines uh, s s uh, represent the moment where we started actually going into production. So we resetted the cloud back then and we've been growing ever since. So this is uh, some graphs showing the history. Uh, this is the cumulative number of VMs. You see we have more than 6 million. That's because we run lots of tests within our infrastructure. And this is the actual number of VMs active at any given time. Uh, OpenStack, it's a collection of services. So it's not a single monolithic piece of code. So you can actually choose which services you want to run. And that's pretty cool. Uh, because then you just deploy whatever your data center or your user community requires. So these are the ones we've been using over time. So you can see at the very beginning, we were just running the core components that allowed for the cloud to be, uh, to be working. And then we've been giving a try to many other services. Most of them have made it to production and are stable now. We still keep on testing new ones. Uh, yeah, and the name up there is the OpenStack name of the release. So what are we most proud of, of our cloud uh, since then? So we've migrated from, um, so I mentioned that the, in the very early days, we just had two cells, which were this logical separation. Well, in this case, it, they match the physical separation of the servers. Now we have migrated to the cells V2, which is a major uh, feature in Nova, in the main, in the compute component of OpenStack. And now we run 70 cells, which allow us to separate the control plane, minimize the risk, and we are more resilient to, to failures. So we now have 70 cells uh, spread across the both data centers. And uh, this allows us to do upgrades in, a, in an easier fashion and also uh, uh, get, um, pick some issues beforehand uh, before they cause a several thing. This is a, a, a minor notice that we, for example, there is a service that we don't run anymore, Silometer, which allowed for connecting uh, all OpenStack services, so standardizing the data. Uh, we have dropped it recently. It's not very maintained anymore, and uh, there are other solutions. Uh, for storage, one of the other cool things at CERN is that we try to reuse as many services that other CERN teams are using. So we have uh, lots of experts in databases, as Frank was here. Then we also have a storage expert. So they already offer like Ceph, CephFS, uh, S3. And so we just rely on those as backends for the OpenStack services like Cinder and Manila. And uh, that's how we offer uh, storage through OpenStack. Then a very popular one is OpenStack Magnum. So Magnum is just the OpenStack service that allows you to provide container orchestrators. So mostly known uh, are Kubernetes, uh, Docker Swarm, and Mesos. It's one of the most growing services within OpenStack. So everyone now wants to create Kubernetes clusters. It's trendy. And we, within CERN, within the OpenStack um, team, we offer a very easy way to provision Kubernetes clusters. Uh, so this is really growing. Then uh, internally within OpenStack, the, we, have, uh, we are migrating to, uh, to the Neutron service, which is the one providing uh, network, um, uh, because this will allow us to move towards SDN, which is a bit complex at the moment, but this is things that we are working on. We are also working in the bare metal provisioning, so we aim at uh, taking care of all the computers in our data center and provision them through Ironic, which is just uh, another, yet another abstraction to be able to, to instantiate uh, bare metal instances. So the whole server belongs to you. You just don't power it on, and you just provision it through OpenStack. This allows us to, uh, to, to keep accounting as a whole because we have integrated with the whole uh, CERN user base. So we have, uh, so it's the way the accounting works, so that's pretty useful for us. 
the way we handle migrations, for instance, uh, sorry, mitigation of uh, campaigns, we are not as flexible as other clouds due to our network constraints, so we cannot live migrate easily between hypervisors so that they are transparent to you, so we run uh, reboot campaigns whenever needed. For that, we have availability zones, so we ensure that our users do not get uh, lost or do not get downtime for more than, or at least they keep some of their VMs if they have a HA service running. Uh, for automation, we heavily rely on two things, Randec, I, it's a pretty standard one, and then OpenStack Mistral, which is yet another OpenStack service that uh, integrates nicely with all the other OpenStack components. So this was one that we included, I think, one or two years ago, and it's proven to be very useful. Um, this is what I mentioned. So then what's coming next? Um, one of the coolest things that has happened last year, later le, at the end of last year, is that we uh, went through another abstraction. So now we are running two regions. So a region is a higher abstraction than cells. So within each region, we still have, I think it's a 50 cells and 20. So we split the region to, have a, to allow ourselves to test uh, changes at scale. So cells already gave us some flexibility with, change, with, with testing and, and discovering early, early issues. But now we can deploy um, controller plane, control plane. Uh, we can upgrade the version to the latest in the batch, uh, in the batch region, which is the one that yet uh, keeps for the physics jobs. And then the services jobs, which are generally more, uh, are not that, uh, uh, are not that happy when we upgrade things because they are running uh, end user services like the mail service or databases. So we don't want to mess things there, but with the batch service, we can have some flexibility because the service there, it's much, it's much bigger, but it's still, it's less changing or less, uh, less risky when it comes to those changes. So this is a major thing we did last year. There is a blog post there nicely uh, telling how we did it. Then we are doing lots of work upstream. Uh, this is another thing, that within OpenStack we are a very important part of the community. They help us a lot because we also report a lot on our scaling issues and things, so that's pretty interesting. We are doing uh, a big work with preemptible instance, that is, we have lots of uh, nodes uh, that for some time might be idle, so we don't want them to be idle. So uh, this is work ongoing to, to allow to run instance that might be killed an, at any time. Uh, it's interesting, or especially other scientific institutes have shown the interest, uh, but there are also nice use cases for private clouds. Uh, and then other challenges, we are also looking into SDN. Uh, we are aware that's a very nice feature that the whole community wants here, because that allows for lots of flexibility. Uh, then we are also uh, aiming at, um, at deploying our control plane within Kubernetes or within containers. And, um, and we are also aiming at uh, taking the whole data center, so most of the nodes are not provisioned through OpenStack, but we aim at also including them within Ironic, within the bare metal service, so to allow to have the whole uh, data center instantiated through OpenStack and then offered through OpenStack, because, I mean, we are the cloud team, so we want everybody using uh, OpenStack. Uh, this is a graph of uh, the main services we, we run, so you can see things like we have uh, 3,500 3, users, uh, the number of cores that we have currently around 300,000, uh, the number of clusters, which is above 500. Uh, so that's mostly Kubernetes cluster. That's very popular. And uh, yeah, this is everything. Now we are looking at the future, constantly reassessing, reanalyzing what we are doing, whether it's useful or not, in constant uh, contact with the community. So yeah, we keep on doing there. Small thing before I finish. Uh, we have this uh, nice conference, uh, I like. So it's uh, OpenStack Days, it's the 27th of May, it's a Monday, you are all invited to come, tell your, your friends, your colleagues, if they're involved somehow within OpenStack, we will be running a whole day of conferences, I think it's here as well, so we will be happy to see you, and uh, thanks for your attention. Well, this is thanks to the slides of the people that I used. Cheers.